On the 1st of June 2005, 4472 passes under the station's long curved overall roof on the last run of the day from Scarborough. A year earlier, the locomotive had made headline news. With its previous owners in considerable financial difficulties, it was inevitable that Flying Scotsman would have to be sold. Hosted by donations from thousands of people, young and old, rich and poor, the National Railway Museum's bid was successful, and Flying Scotsman became part of the National Collection, something many people believed should have happened over 40 years earlier. Steam was to make a series of midweek runs from here at York to Scarborough during with two return journeys each day, and away from the weekend crowds, this was just like the good old days of steam. At the East Coast Resort, the Pacific reverses its train under the superb signal gantry, watched by a handful of enthusiasts. For the purist, Flying Scotsman doesn't look quite right. In this LNER Apple Green livery, the A3s never had smoke deflectors and a double chimney. These weren't added until the British Railways era. The 10 o'clock train from King's Cross to Edinburgh became known as the Flying Scotsman from the 1920s, with one of the LNER specifics at the head of the train. For part of this period, it had the distinction of making the 393-mile journey non-stop. Two crews were needed, and the changeover was accomplished by means of the corridor tender. It's a different world, and a different century, as 4472 departs Scarborough. How much of the original locomotive survives from the 1920s is debatable. The boiler dates from the 1940s, while other parts were sometimes replaced or renewed. Some say that only the connecting rods are from the original machine. So, is this Flying Scotsman at all? Now, some views on the main line. Here, the Pacific heads away from Moulton en route for Scarborough. Now, 4472 heads away from the outskirts of York.
Next comes a scene at Seema. It's just a few miles from Scarborough, but the line actually climbs into the East Coast Resort, all a quirk of the geology of this strange but pleasant land. The Vale of York provides some classic backdrops, although the route's rather flat, a bit like the East Coast Main Line, really. Alongside 